Hello, welcome to episode number 315 of the TW2A Challenge Run. This is going to be raw for week 2 of February 2022. What the fuck are you on about February? December. And last week we had a pretty sacked show. We saw the right off of Sasha Banks. <laughs> we saw, um, yeah. A lot more stuff as the build to no way no not no way out um new year's revolution begins and that build continues on tonight's show and we have the matches confirmed on your screen i think it's walter versus not, who the fuck is walter um gunter versus zergis the mighty it's nova nebula versus rio ripley in the main event for the raw women's title and there's another match that i can't remember off the top of my head right now oh um john morrison versus omas for the IC title yes of course <laughs> anyway, without any further ado, let's jump into the show. Drew McIntyre, the World Heavyweight Champion, opens up the show. He says, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Monday Night Raw. So, so last week, fresh off Survivor Series, fresh off our victory, I found my next challenger for this here World Heavyweight Championship, none other than Ludwig Kaiser. Now, now, don't get me wrong, Ludwig has had a very impressive stint here on Raw since he came up. I don't think he's actually been beaten at all. Which, you know, he's a credible threat. But not one that I can't overcome. You see, Ludwig, you got a lot of things in your locker. But you don't have any championships. And you're not going to get this one. Then, wrestling has more than one Raw family. Out comes Cody. And he says, good, e good afternoon, Drew. So, yes, last week it was confirmed that Drew McIntyre will defend the World Heavyweight Championship next against Mr. Ludwig Kaiser, a man who, quite frankly, has become one of the most impressive people here on Raw in recent weeks. However, last week the American Nightmare announced that he would be the first confirmed entrant into the 2023 Royal Rumble match, and I'm going to win the whole damn thing. And I want my return match to WWE Raw. So I'm just saying, Drew, keep eyes in the back of your head. Because you're holding a Rhodes Championship. And if a Rhodes wants that championship, a Rhodes will take that championship off whenever you want to. And then Carlin interrupts. Just Carlin by himself. And he comes to the ring and he goes, You're talking a big game in here. I don't actually think I've ever heard um, Parker Bordreau cut a promo. So I have no idea how he'd speak. I generally don't think I've ever heard him speak in his life. Because he's not normally been speaking here either. But I need him to speak for the <laughs> for the Carrying Cross story to advance. And he goes, Last week you, you cheap-shotted our boys. Gukarkas, Cutler, Carrion, all of us. And I don't, we're not going to sit here and take that lion down because we're a cult. And we're not going to stop till we end you, Cody. We're going to be your American Nightmare. And Cody's like, that's a good line. Did Daddy give that one to you? Okay, so kid, I see what you're doing here. Because don't call me kid. Only Carrion calls people kid, okay? Kid. And Cody goes, sorry. Carland. I understand what you're doing here. You're trying to win the good graces back of Carrion Cross because Carrion Cross didn't want you a part of the cult as it started, and now you feel like berating me is the only way to get back in Carrion Cross's good books. So I'll tell you what. You go back there. You give this little message to your little, your little leader. Tell him that he's got a tag team match tonight. He's going to be teaming with you, Carland. Carland goes, oh yeah? Against who? And Cody goes, against me? And then he just turns to Drew smiling and Drew's like, an opportunity to kick someone's head off. I'm in. So for one night only, former WWE Tag Team Champions Cody Rhodes and Drew McIntyre are going to unite to stop you, Carland. See you later, kid. Oh, turning Cody's return into a feud with the Carrying Cross cult. 
Only me. 85 rated opening match. Um, wild brawl here between Gunter and Zergis. And of course it's Gunter who picks up the win with a golden bomb in 13-15. He gets a 95 and a 76 for Zergis. And yeah, another impressive victory for the ring general. Here to kick off the in-ring action here on Raw. <laughs> we then cut to the return episode of Going On Record. And Titus is going, you know, truth has gone off. You know, our, our, we're doing a special Christmas Carol um, audition se segment next week. And we're, we're trying to take applicants and... Shanky and Billy Kay have come back, but Truth, he still, I don't know where he's gone. You know, we took the 347 title with him. And, and he happens to look oh, Dog, I'm back. You know, I found somebody for this abortion tape. And Titus goes, Uh, excuse me? You mean audition? Goes, yeah, whatever. Anyway, I found this guy, you know. He seemed really cool, Dog, and like, he could be the next top star here in. Titus World Records. That's like, oh, excellent, bring him in. And then in walks. <laughs> I have a very vivid image in my head. He's, obviously he's got the ring, the nose ring in. He's wearing those, like the dude love sunglasses, you know, with the peace symbol on him. And he's got a leather jacket, no sleeves on. But it is, it's Joe Gacy. And then Titus is like, oh, truth. Where'd you find this guy? And get and then Gay's like, shh, I know exactly what you're thinking, Mr. O'Neill. And no, I'm not here to cause any trouble. I'm simply here to tell you all that I am now Joe Gizzle. And I am here to join your crew. And Tyler goes, really? Joe Gizzle, that's you, huh? He goes, yes, Titus. What appears to be the issue here? He goes, Well, I don't buy any of your crap. You know, you're coming in here. Titus World Records. Going on. Record. You're trying to get us to join your little cult. We ain't accepting it. And he goes, Oh, I think it's so. You're jumping to too many conclusions, Mr. O'Neill. See, people can change. I have changed. And I'll see you next week when we are here for your special Christmas audition and he leaves and then Archie's like dog I kind of like him and Titus goes don't fall for it truth don't fall for it <laughs> so Gacy's quest to I guess find new recruits to take on the anime boys led him to try and infiltrate Titus world records of all places we then get, for the first time I can think of in, like, months, um, the entire grand jury in one segment together, not split into two. And they come to the ring and they go, ah, here we go again, Dolph Ziggler, DZ, Joe, grand jury, lost inside of war games, yeah, 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 okay, enough of the pleasantries, okay. Sure, Survivor Series didn't go the way that we wanted it to, but that's not gonna stop us, Okay. Edge will let him and Randy and the Vikings have their little fun, their little retirement party, but get this one thing straight. We are gonna be the ones that are here, standing tall on Raw, and just in case you forgot, you know, Julia and Scarlet, my lovely Scarlet there, and Sonya, all here, all under one roof. And they're going to dominate. You know, we saw Liv Morgan and Sheeta last week stake their claim to being the top women's tag team here on Raw. Well, that can't be the case because we've got the best women's tag team on Raw right here, right here. And they're going to win this here match. And then you're going to regret ever doubting the validity of the Grand Jury, okay? That's the show. And then that squash match is against... Jamie Hilton and Maggie Woodrow and Julia and Sonya win. Julia pins Maggie with a diving crossbody. She gets an 89, a 72 for Sonya, a 48 for Maggie and a 54 for Jamie. 
We're going to cut to Indy. And Indy is, you know, she's talking to um, Kathy Kelly. Kathy goes, because last week, I'm I, I feeling guilty about last week, you know, because Sasha, she wanted to go out there for that main event, and you know, this is the woman who really gave my big break for the last two years. I've sort of, you know, been learning under Sasha. And to see her, you know, go out there like that. I tried to stop her, but she had no interest in listening. And she sent me to the back, and obviously I'm going to listen to what she tells me to do. But I can't help but think that, you know, what happened to her was my fault, Kathy. You know, you ever feel like that? And Kathy, of course, like, nods her head. And Indy goes, yeah, no, it sucks. Like, I'm supposed to come here and keep my mind on, on the goal of becoming Raw Women's Champion. And... Now all I can think about is how I've let my mentor down. And then we have the community here, Raw Women's Champion. And then Charlotte walks in with her cronies. And she goes, Bo, let's take your baby steps here, all right, hon, okay? First of all, what happened to Sasha last week was justice, okay? Because she had that coming a long time ago. And quite honestly, I feel, I, I'm so sorry to everybody here on Raw that I, I, provoked this side out of Rhea Ripley, you see. If I didn't lose at Survivor Series graciously like the queen I am, we wouldn't see this side of Rhea Ripley, so she can really thank me, and thank me for not catching this in at Survivor Series and taking her title, because I could have done that, unlike you, who's never going to be the Royal Women's Champion, because you're too busy crying about what happens to everybody else. Grow a backbone, Indy. Uh, Indy just looks at <laughs> Aaliyah, Skylar, and Jordan behind her and goes, that's pretty rich to say when you've got, you know, three of your own lackeys. Charlotte goes, my court are here to escort me to do queen business, okay? Like later on tonight, if you're going to keep running your mouth, I'll see you in the ring and I'll boot your head off and then we'll see you in the hospital alongside Sasha. And Indy goes, I like that challenge, I'll see you out there then. So, Indy Hartwell and Charlotte Flair, one-on-one -on -one later on tonight. <laughs> we think, shush, shush, please, shush. Ladies and gentlemen, you are, once again, do not turn off your TV sets, do not change the channel, do not adjust your eyes in the presence of Master Gable. Uh, thank you. Now, shush, shush, please, shush. For the last few weeks, I've been coming out here and proving why I'm not only the greatest mat wrestler, but I'm also the smartest wrestler on the entire Raw brand. Because nobody can take me down. I am a master for a reason. And tonight, it's time for round two. That's free in French for those of you who can't, you know, understand. Thank you. Sheesh. And if anybody back there thinks they've got what it takes to hang with Master Gable, come out and give me a shot. It's a shameful thing you've lost your head. A careless man who could wind up dead. Out comes Seamus. He goes, If it's a fight you're wanting, fella, oh boy, oh, you'd be hard pressed to find anybody who wants a fight quite like I want a fight. Let's do it, fella. And Gable goes, um, no, 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 shush, please, shush. You didn't let me finish. Anybody in the back there beside Seamus who wants to face Master Gable? And Seamus goes, well, I'm out here, fella, first come, first serve. You're not afraid of me, are you, Gable? And Gable goes, no. Why would I be afraid of you? You, you lost, okay? You, you're losing you with the World Heavyweight Champion. You lost it after three weeks, huh? that sting? And Seamus is like, you're right, I didn't have, you know, the greatest time with that World Heavyweight Championship recently. But at least I've had time with the World Heavyweight Championship. And Gable goes, don't you come out here and disrespect the master, Gable. You know what? As a matter of fact, no, no five minute open challenge tonight. You are lost, Seamus. If you want to boo anybody, boo him. And Seamus just shrugs his shoulders and just laughs as Gable storms to the back. We then cut to Gorilla. Morrison's ready to wrestle Omas for the IC title. When Ali approaches and he goes, You know, I don't want to say that I don't have faith in you. 
because I do. But just in case this is the last time I see you with that, you did a good job holding holding down the title in my in my absence. And Jomo goes, well, I appreciate that that sentiment, but this ain't the last you're gonna see your Johnny Drip Drip as the IC champion. You can bank on that. And then Morrison versus Omos time. Um, I'm okay with the 70 rating here because of how it went down. Um, Omos gets in the ring and they have the face off. And then the bell rings. Morrison charges at Omos. He immediately gets swiped to the floor. And Omos roars. He boots Jomo. He like chops at Jomo. And just for like six minutes, he just like tosses Jomo around. Bivens is not thinking, so I'm going, yeah, that's it. You know, beat him up, beat him up, beat him up. And then finally, after that, putting him out of his misery, Omos picks him up, hits that double choke slam, puts his foot on Jomo's chest. One, two, and then he lifts his foot up off Morrison. And then he looks down at Bivens. Bivens like, yep, that a boy. And then Omos just looks back down, puts his foot back on Morrison's chest, and he gets a one, and then lifts his foot off again. And he sort of just nods his head and goes, okay, okay. And then he just walks over the top rope and walks to the back and gets counted out. Morrison retains the belt by intentional count out. Omas, I guess, wasn't his job tonight to win that title. But he sure as shit did soften up Morrison and he, you know, got the pin. So, <laughs> 79 for Omas, 75 for Morrison. What a bizarre turn of events. Speaking of bizarre turns of events, we then, <laughs> Kevin Patrick knocks on the GFO locker room door, and then obviously they're, they're practicing on the inside, but then it stops, and she opens back the episode door and takes her head through the door and goes, hello. She goes, you know, girls have somewhere to get your thoughts on, you know. On Heat later on tonight, you're defending them tag team championships against Amber Reporter and Kelsey Cook. And then Mackie snatches the mic off him and he goes, We beat them. Then we want Bailey and Dakota. And she throws the mic on the floor and slams the door shut. And Kevin's like, Well, there you have it. We then cut backstage to Veer and Omas and Bivens and Dewdrop walking through the hallway. And Omas is like putting a bit of money in his pocket. And then Kathy Kelly runs up. She's like, um, Bivens, what, what the hell was that? And he goes, listen here, Kathy, sweetie, come on. I told you, I've told everybody, I told Ali, I told Morrison, I told everybody that's listening. Omas ain't here to win that championship, oh, Omas is here to make winning that championship easy. Okay? He proved that out there that he could pin the Econel champion, you know, he got the two count, and then the extra one count, that's three. Can you do math, Kathy? I don't know if you can do math. But he wasn't supposed to win. Because Omas, at any point in time, could become your Renekarnel champion. Now it's not that time. Okay? I'm nothing if not a great businessman, Kathy Kelly. And that biz, sometimes in business you've got to make sacrifices. And Omas being the Renekarnel champion is one of those sacrifices we've had to make. But trust you when I tell you, John Morrison, he ain't gonna be the Incarnate Champion for much longer. And then they all just walk off. <laughs> we go from that to Carland walking into the Carrying Cross Cults hideout, or whatever the fuck that is. Whatever ed wherever edgy people hang out. And he goes, What's the status? And he goes, Um. Me and Drew, we got a tag match against Drew McIntyre and Cody later on tonight. He goes, what? I told you to go out there and end them. Not make us wrestle them again. I mean, I do appreciate the opportunity to decimate and destroy that punk Cody and the world heavyweight champion at the same time. But Garland, promise me this, kid. You've got to stop putting your weight around here. Or else, who knows? These bad things that we do, they might start happening to you. Nothing personal, kid. 
Oh! Ah! Nine? It, that does say 90, right? Indy Hartwell versus Charlotte Flair. 90, 10, 43. Submission, figure of eight leg lock. 71 for Indy, 89 for Charlotte. That, that, that is what that says. I, I'm not losing my mind here, am I? Um... Yeah. I did not expect that. <laughs> well, why the fuck was this match so good? You know, that actually helped my story. Because this was supposed to be like Indy's big singles match. And it got a 90, so it was clearly a banger. But yeah, of course, Charlotte wins, you know. She's been sort of floating about for a bit. But she does still have that briefcase, so you never know when she could pop up again. But yes, the Queen... Another showing on Raw and another victory. I'm going to get another quick backstage segment of Aiden English, Deanna and Chelsea. <laughs> they are performing and practicing for something. Because it's crept up on me as well, don't worry. Because, you know, there being a World Cup and shit in real life has made me sort of forget. But apparently we are nearly at the time we've got to start doing the Christmas Raw on Smackdown. So, people like Aiden English and J Flo and Titus World Records probably going to be all over the Christmas show next week. <laughs> but then, Smile and China walk in. And they're like, just challenge Deonna and Chelsea to a tag match on Heat. Because they're not on the show. And I wanted to give Tegan and Kylie an appearance on Raw. Because, you know, Tegan just came back and Kylie was probably going to end up getting signed in real life so i kind of want to spotlight them some more be like hey i have these people yeah let's use them but i had no match room for them today so heat it is i actually have a full card for heat because we have the um the two next gen cup matches which i think are if i remember correctly are the last two matches from the first group and then we have Amory and Kelsey against J-Flow, and we have this. And that is a full heat card, so yeah, that's nice. We then get a um, segment just recapping what happened to Sasha last week, because she is here for like three more days, so I may as well get one more use out of her before she fucks off. <laughs> and then we cut to Bianca and Nova with Kathy. And she goes, what happened to Sasha, of course, last week? Does that make any of does that make you tonight nervous? Does that make you nervous for tonight? And she goes, uh, uh, Sasha is great, you know, but there's one difference around. There's two differences around here. I haven't been attacked yet tonight, you know, because I'd love to see Rhea try for one, and two, I was smart enough to avoid her because she appears to be, you know, taking these cheap shots. But don't worry, I got my girl Lea Bianca watching my back, and it's gonna be great, you know. Tonight, Rhea Ripley is going to be taught a lesson in humility. My gift to her this holiday season is a lesson. And that lesson is not to mess with Nova Nebula or the EST, the roughest, the toughest, the best, the best, the best. And I'm going to leave here tonight the new Raw Women's Champion. And that's going to be my gift this holiday season, Gavi. And I can thank Rhea Ripley for giving it to me. Then Nova and Bianca walk off, and again, we just see Lyra lurking in the background. Oh, another 90! <laughs> another 90-rated match. Um, Andrade versus Montez Ford gets a 90. Andrade wins in 40 minutes and 7 seconds of a Hammerlock DDT. 86 for Andrade, 77 for Tez. And yeah, Andrade with a win. But... After that, we get a promo from Zelina. She's like, well, 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 would you look at that? Once that dead weight, you know, was removed and trimmed off this tree, Andrade picks up a win. Andrade, Cruz, and Joaquin on Velocity last week picked up a win. Are you seeing what I'm getting at now? Those two idiots and their manager, Cynthia, who've let's be honest, think she's as good as me, but isn't. They're nothing without us, and they were just dragging Legado de la Sombra down. The the Titans run, Cynthia, Merlik, and Lindsay pop up, and she's like, hmm, so, you may have one thing correct there. 
we may have been dragging Legado de la, Fre de, de, de la Sombra down, but it's got nothing to do with us being worse. Remember, as you see, Grand Metalik was the last person surviving in that Survivor Series match, long after any of your boys got pinned. So maybe your egos just couldn't handle the fact that there was betters in your group than you. But fear not, because this Friday on WWE Velocity on Beacock, you're going to bear witness to our wild card. The man who we're going to have that's going to take death from above from a duo to a trio. We will debut him this Friday on Velocity and next week you bring Andrade and we'll bring our guy and let's have a lucha match and then why stop there because I got two more weeks worth how about a New Year's revolution your three my three six man tag team match and Selena goes if this is a chance to shut you up for good, then fine. Bring it on. <laughs> so, Legado Civil War is in full effect. So, <laughs> the timeline will be, in case you couldn't keep track, next episode is in, yeah, this week's episode of Velocity. We'll see a guy debut who is the third member of Death From Above. That guy will then face Andrade on Raw next week. And then that guy will team with Lindsay and Metal League against these three at uh, New Year's Rev. <laughs> Got it? Good. Then see Liv and Sheeta being interviewed. Or not even being interviewed, probably just cutting a promo. They've both got Kendo 6 over their shoulder. I go, you know, Survivor Series may be over, but who's to say that means any alliances formed for that show have to be? You see, me and Sheeta here, we're bonded. We're both ready and eager and willing, okay? To be the next women's tag team champions. We don't care if that has to be J-Flow or Double Trouble or Damage Control or any of those people. We are going to take those championships. That'll be Sheeta's first piece of gold, my first piece of tag team gold. And then the Grand Jury girls just walk past and stare a hole through them. And then Liv and Sheeta are like, Sup? Yeah, how can I help you? And they just walk off. So... Clearly someone disagrees. <laughs> we then see Montez Ford beaten and battered and bruised after his match with Andrade when he's jumped by Omas and Veer and as laid out, Omas grabs a hold of him, Veer punches him in the midsection, Omas tosses him into Veer, million dollar arm and then Omas hits the double arm choke slam onto the concrete onto Montez Ford. And they just leave him laying. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was going to say, what is this segment? This is just the 10 minute segment of Cody's entrance for his match. And I put Drew's in there as well because his is also fairly long. Because he's got the sword, he's got the title, he's got the pyro, all that. But yes, this is Cody and Drew, former WWE Tag Team Champions, back again 12 years later to take on Karrion Cross and Carl and. 79, it's obviously not going to be as good as any other match they've had because, you know, Carlin's in there and he's not popular or, you know, I'm not going to say good, but he's not exceptional in the ring. He's just, he can, he's fine. Cody Rose and Drew McIntyre defeat Karrion Cross and Carlin when Carlin is the one who takes the crossroads and is pinned by the American Nightmare. I, spe I specify Cody because I just imagine during the match, Drew... He's here, he headbutts Carl and he hits the future shock and all that. He kips up and he goes back into the corner. And then he goes 3, 2, 1, countdown. But as the countdown reaches 1, he sort of just turns to the like the timekeeper's area. And Ludwig's there. He's, sort of, he's holding the World Heavyweight Championship. He's sort of just looking at it in his hands. Holding it up in the air, just like inspecting it. And then he just walks off with the belt through the crowd. And she was like, oh, you son of a bitch, get back here. And then Drew tags Cody in and then tries to run to get his belt back. But, of course, Cody still comes out on top. 89 for Drew, 88 for Cody, 78 for Carrion, and a 33 for Carland. Here's this segment. Um, for lack of a better term, this will be like an AEW-style, um, like, Tony Schiavone segment. 
Um, I don't want to use Kevin. Oh, I have um, what's his name? Jimmy Smith, because he's the um co- the, the the sort of sports based correspondent like Pat McAfee on SmackDown. So he's in the middle. The one side of him is Akira and Humberto, and the other side is Regal, Dudley, Pete, Ridge, and Florence. No Gunter because he already wrestled tonight. Same with Zergus on the other side, and Zaya will probably be with them. And he says, after Regal's words last week and earlier on tonight, Gunter defeating Zergus the Mighty, it is now officially announced that at New Year's Revolution Week 1, three weeks from Sunday, the first state of WP in my event of 2023, part of the Dragon, Humberto Carrillo and Akira Tozawa will defend against Dudley Davis and Pete Dunne of the Regal Coalition. And Pete Regal's like, that's e- excellent, excellent news. Because, you see, you've been mighty fine champions, you have. But your path as champions ends when 2022 ends and the clock ticks over. Because my guys, Pete Dudley, are the first of many, many men that will claim championship gold in the name of Lord William Regal. And he sort of walks off, and then Tazawa and Humberto like sort of just stand there, like, come on, come on, bring it on then, bring it on. So there's your tag match for New Year's Rev. Low-key, early candidate for match of the year. <laughs> Based on how these two are performing and how these two can perform. But that is for the next year. Next week, though, we had got the very Christmas special episode of Raw. And as we heard earlier on tonight, it will be And the Lad Day. Taking on Cynthia Crespo's newest man, the newest member of part of Death from Above. As the Legado de la Sombra Civil War continues to boil over. Won't be very feeling feeling good Christmassy times there. But where it will be is we will get a festive bit of fun. Master Gable's five minute open challenge with Seamus will take place on next week's show. We're giving Gable a week to prepare for the Celtic Warrior. And then also, after the backstage confrontation we just saw a minute ago, we've got women's action next week as the Regal Coalition's Florence will take on Zia Lee of Path of the Dragon. And last but certainly not least, the announcement you've all been waiting for. We've heard from the antagonists, but the pro tags are back. A Christmas special episode of my wrestling academia. But beyond Christmas, you have the new year, and what better way to ring that in than with New Year's Revolution? And we just heard the first confirmed match for that show, the raw branded show, will be part of the Dragon Sabo career when Akira Tozawa defending the Raw Tag Team Championships against Pete Dunne and Dudley Davis of the Regal Coalition. 81 rated main event, I guess that's fine, because despite having good psychology, it's apparently not that good, so 81's fine. Um, Rhea wins with the Riptide. Nova looks like she's got Rhea beat when, like, a black, just like the Black Feather just appears in the ring. And Nova's like, what the fuck is this? And then Lyra, Valkyria, what, just stands at ringside, just staring at Nova. And she's like, what, do you, what the fuck are you doing? What do you want from me? And then a riptide to Nova takes her down and Rhea scores the pin. One, two, three, to retain the belt. And Lyra just sort of like casually just walks back through the crowd as Rhea stands tall with the belt. 80 for Nova, 87 for Rhea. But that's not the end of the show because Rhea... She goes outside and she goes to rip the, the everything off the top of the announce table. And she's going to do the same turnover that she did to Sasha Banks last week. I'm on my own against the wall. The pressure's building, but no, I will never fall. Instead of crying, they hear me roar. When out comes Bianca Belair storming from the back. And <laughs> she fights fights off Rhea, whips her with the braid. Which Rhea sort of like tries to tank, but she can't. She sort of staggers around. And Bianca, like, clotheslines her over the barricade, sends her packing. Rhea takes the belt and stands, like, goes up the steps in the crowd. 
to leave. And Bianca's like, girl, uh-uh, you get your ass back here. You think this is a game? Huh? What you did to Sasha last week? What you tried to do to Nova this week? Girl, you gotta be stopped. Because you may not think it's possible for you to be stopped, but I'm the one who's gonna do it. So, why don't you say you beat Nova, you beat Sasha, you beat Sheeta, you beat Liv. I never got my rematch for that Raw Women's Championship. My Raw Women's Championship. So what you say, three weeks time. First pay daily premium live event of 2023, New Year's Revolution. You defend the Raw Women's Championship against Bianca Belair, the EST of WWE. But you don't do so in a normal match, nah. I say we take that title. Or we hang it 20 feet in the air. We bring in your chair, your table, and we have a good old-fashioned bit of tender love and care, TLC. Girl, see ya then. Ninety. Carland was slightly overused. Fair enough, I did just sort of, like, really just amp up his story out of nowhere this week. But it's fine. It made me laugh. And that's all that really matters. That matters more than what the actual booking is like. <laughs> so, but yes, as I just said, we do have a full card for Heat this week. Which we shall get to now. <laughs> Heat kicks off with a garbage match. Possibly the worst match I've ever booked. Um, Nene and Connie Ortiz in the first round. Remember, in this group, everybody's at one win, one loss. So these are effectively just straight knockout matches. And it is Nene who picks up the win with the winning kick over Connie Ortiz in 741. Nene gets a 28 and a 24 for Connie Ortiz. And yeah, she's now on four, which means Connie's out and Nene is through. But we don't know if Nene is top or yet, top or not yet, because the winner of this next match will have four. And if it's Symphony, then Nene will be top because... She beat Symphony, but she lost to Tracy. So if, if they're on the same number of points, and if Tracy wins, she's top. If Symphony wins, Nene's top. And the winner is... Tracy Charo. Because of course it is, because she's scoring the best. This is even without chemistry. <laughs> this Tracy Charo defeats Symphony Fox in 545 with an Olympian cutter. 39 for Tracy Sharrow, 24 for Symphony. They don't seem to click, it's fine. 25 is actually okay for that then, I guess. And that says, yeah, the group A is ended with Nene and Tracy joint winners, but it's actually not. It's Tracy top because she beat Nene in their match. And then you just get Brandy explaining all that and congratulating these two on getting through. And then next week we'll see the last group. And then we'll know that in the, in the semi-finals it'll be Nene against whoever wins group B. And then Tracy against whoever comes second in Group B. But to your regularly scheduled wrestlers that we recognise, um, we've got two tag matches to round out the show here. We've got Smile and Shine picking up a victory of VXT when Tegan pinched Chelsea with the Vulture Culture Destroyer. 79 for Tegan, 66 for Kylie, 69 for Deanna, and a 49 for Chelsea. And the main event for the women's tag titles gets a 68. I'll take that. Um, I just couldn't be bothered to fiddle with the two who had the belt, so it's just going to be Mackie and Tam again, I guess. And then, But they do retain Tam pins Anne-Marie with a spin kick to make defense number five of the women's tag team titles. 70 for Anne-Marie, 63 for Kelsey, 75 for Na Mackie, and a 73 for Tam. So with double trouble now, you know, in the books and behind the champions... Mackie did make it pretty clear on Raw this week who she wants next. 61, Heat, whatever. No, nobody cares about Heat's overall rating. What does matter, though, is what you thought of mainly Raw, but Heat as well, I guess. If you have a strong opinion about Heat, either way. But next week will be the Christmas episode of Raw, which should be a laugh. <laughs> which is fine because Raw's is a filler show on a five-week build to a pay-per-view. SmackDown's Christmas episode, which will be week three 
like in three episodes time not next week the week after will be the go home show for the pay-per-view so that's gonna be funny anyway yes i'll see you next time for week two smackdown which won't be the christmas special episode see you then